first of all, I'm extremely grateful to Vice Chairman and uh, Dr. Mehta to be here today. I must give a little bit of background. CPR on this particular initiative and NITI met by accident through a workshop seminar on Swasth Bharat, Swachh Bharat, and one of the several initiatives which CPR is uh, taking up. And we had an opportunity to look at all the work streams that are coming together from various sources. It gave me an opportunity to plug into our new mandate, which was also to create a platform where we reach out to policy institutions, uh, think tanks, civil society organizations who are working on similar areas or are actually field practitioners and have done or conducted work on, on field research or experiments or actual practices in various different areas. We chose Swachh Bharat mainly because it's the most um, critical agenda, both for the government as well as for all of us as citizens and the public. So this is the first of the open lecture series. Um, so it's really very important for us that we get uh, to hear from everyone. And we are also very lucky today to have uh, with us from the government of West Bengal, the first district that has been declared uh, ODF in the country, and your chief minister has formally declared it so. So thank you for coming, and uh, I will request Dr. Mehta to say something. Um, it's a real privilege being here, and particularly we are very grateful to you know Vice Chairman, uh, who's sort of old friend and colleague, sort of that he could spare time, and uh, to. Shrimati Khuller for actually giving us this opportunity and really taking this initiative to create a platform where researchers, policymakers, and the wider public can actually interact on uh, really some of the most important policy issues uh, uh, on our uh, of, um, uh, of our times. Um, I won't take long, uh, other than just to introduce the agenda for the day. Uh, uh, this is an ongoing collaboration between the Niti Aayog and, and CPR, but, but really it's not meant to be confined to these two institutions. It really is meant to involve all of you, and we are deeply grateful that you are uh, here. Today we have, in a sense, two items on the agenda, as it were, um, which are expressed in two presentations. First, we will have a presentation about 15 to 20 minutes uh, on Nadia district in West Bengal, uh, which has been uh, declared ODF uh, uh, free, and, and, and it's apparently quite an astonishing uh, case study. Unfortunately, Dr. Salim could not be with uh, us due to pressing commitments, but we have Rajeshri Mitra and Avirud Bose um, uh, from the district, uh, and they will open up with a presentation of 15 to 20 minutes. And then immediately we'll move into the second presentation, which is sort of more conceptual, which is really asking the question, what is open defecation free society? What, how do we actually measure success in that? Uh, and then we'll open up the floor uh, to some um, uh, discussion. So we'll jump right, uh, right in, and I'd um, uh, invite uh, Avirup and Rajshri Mitra to sort of uh, begin. Uh, just one more word, which is just a thank you to all the organizations at the uh, organizers at the Niti Aayog and CPR, and particularly Dr. Shubhagato Dasgupta, who's heads uh, uh, all the sanitation water work at CPR for actually putting this uh, event together. So, please. Before you begin, just a broad, broad indication about twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And then 20 minutes uh, for the framework presentation on the issues, and the open. But then we'll open up for discussion. Is that okay? Right, ma'am. Okay. So. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, I'm Rajoshi. I'm a service subdivisional officer, Ranaghat, Nodia. And uh, we are trying to represent Dr. Salim here. He couldn't be here. So we'll uh, proceed right away with the presentation. What we have here is uh, we have named our presentation. And incidentally, it's the name of our in uh, initiative that we've taken in the last two years, Shobar Shochaga, which literally means in the vernacular, toilet for all. Uh, what made us uh, take this uh, initiative is a trigger. 
uh, what we have in West Bengal and in Nadia is two geographically contiguous areas, Bangladesh and Nadia, bordering areas. What we found out is that in Bangladesh, the percentage of orphan defecation, according to WHO and their own figures, uh, is around 4.20, whereas the same figure for West Bengal, around the time of 2012-13, stood to be around 40% which we found to be uh, completely unacceptable and a shameful figure for us. Now, how we got into the uh, figure is, like all other states, like all other districts, we undertake, and we did undertake, during the time of uh, about 2012 and 13, a baseline survey. Now, this baseline survey returned us figures for different criterions of uh, families defecating in the open. So, we got a figure of around 1 lakh 87,366 families defecating in the open from the BPL category who were and are eligible for subsidies, for all kinds of subsidies, either from PSC NBA or from Swachh Bharat Mission. And secondly, we got a figure of around 1,14,000 families, households without toilets, who are from APL but from marginalized families, which could be represented as a marginalized population uh, scheduled caste tribes and other population, marginal farmers and etc., who were again found to be defecating in the open. And uh, beyond this survey, beyond this uh, area, we can find a fringe area of uh, APL people, technically APL, but defecating in the open and without and found to be without the means to construct a toilet of around 37,000. So that returned a figure of 3,39,000 families defecating in the open, and if we multiply it out with an average family size of around three to four, so we get a figure of 12 uh, lakh people defecating in the open. So this we took is, uh, we can take the figure. So what we did is, and we started at a time when uh, it was beyond our means, and uh, uh, the, I'm talking about the time of February, March 2013, or maybe earlier, September 2012. At that point in time, we did not have a dedicated subsidy mechanism whereby we could entirely fund the toilet. So uh, at that point in time, what we had is like around uh, 5,600 uh, 5, from TSC NBA. And what we did is we combined it with uh, MGA NRGA. We dovetailed it with MGA NRGA. So we pulled in uh, resources from engineering in the means of wage uh, wage resources and material resources and the uh, the estimate returned to be a figure of around uh, 4600 so that gives us a total of about 10000 and we asked for a beneficiary contribution of 900 so that gives us a total of 10900 so with that resource we started constructing toilets as a pilot so uh, around july the 15th uh, 2013, we started the pilot in 17 GPs of 17 blocks. Each block has one pilot gram panchayat. And within a month or two, the pilot returned exceedingly wonderful figures. And we, we found that people were accepting it. So what we did is we rolled out it in all the 187 gram panchayats of the district. And uh, the difference is we did not take it to be an administrative endeavor. We rolled it out in the open. We did not make the program uh, something that we could administer from our offices. We went to the schools, we went to the lowest possible levels of uh, interaction, and we rolled it out there. And uh, we made a, I'll show you the next slide. So what we did is like, we went to the schools, we went to the gram panchayats, gram sabhas, and we took a public oath that this is what we are doing, this is the pilot, the pilot is returning good figures. We intend and affirm to make the district open defecation free by around March 2015. And what you see is here, the, like uh, the district minister, Dr. Salim, is taking a pledge. Uh, the Sabhadipati is here, the local MLA minister uh, are there. But what you have here is also a local doctor, a businessman. So pe can people completely unconnected with the process of uh, this kind of government programs, we have brought them in. and. We asked them to be present and witness it and to participate in, in whatever means they could. We also asked the general populace to come. So what you see is a very unusual thing. What I felt was a very unusual thing is like people taking out their hands. And at a time, that, like this is 2012 September, people taking uh, October, uh, taking out their hands and taking a pledge, uh, 
initially we thought uh, it would be difficult to make it a success but why do you think do we think that we uh, made it to success is because of key differentiators and something that we feel that uh, we have done well so i'd like to elucidate on those points basically the administrative will was very important throughout this i can say that like throughout this journey of from 2012 september to up to now sabar shochagar this program we named it sabar shochagar we we advertised it in vernacular and it got priority over every other uh, programs that uh, we 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 at the district level try to administer we try to help out with and it became the start all and end all of all our uh, deliberations our reviews not that we did any less in any other schemes but this was our bedrock secondly is a political will we found our local leadership the sabhadipati the jila parishad everyone to be completely at our side and completely at at a, agreement at what we were saying how we wanted to administer it and how we wanted to go about it secondly it's a very important thing that mobilization of key stakeholders and women and children what we have witnessed during this this last two and a half years is an unprecedented level of people uh, that is uh, government reaching out to people we did meet and we made friends with so many people i mean we couldn't think about we met school children like we have this thing in the district every monday we go to the schools starting from the top to bottom of the administration everybody goes to the school they like have a like 5 minutes 10 minutes small speech about making people understand making the children understand what are the ill effects of open defecation and then we try to segregate who is defecating in the open we talk to them we tell them that the uh, Uh, we tell tell them that what are what could be the ill effects and what he is subjecting himself and his fellow students to by defecating in the open and then we make sure that he is not slighted or somehow uh, uh, that we do uh, in some way and then the message goes home i'm sure and then we reach out to women now how we do it is like uh, we organize we did organize over this last period of 2 2 years innumerable number of uh, rallies congregation of women self help groups csps we asked each and every one of them to come and meet at some place and we would go to that place so we told women how this is and we women we understand is uh, the managers of the house so if i tell them that this is how and this is why you spend so much on medicine this is why your children are stunted and your future generation will be stunted in 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 time so we believe that they did understand and they became our key stakeholders faith leaders this is something uh, interesting nadia district happens to be a district where uh, faith leaders hold a lot of sway it is the international headquarters of iskon uh, ram krishna mat is very active there the local imams they have tremendous sway over the minority population so when we bring them together uh, dr salim brought them all together and had individual level talks with all of them now when they go back and they tell that through their religious deliberations through their weekly prayers in whatever manner when they tell the populace that what what are the ill effects of uh, this uh, open defecation one secondly what is the scheme how do you pay how do you get a toilet made and how do you get the money now when this is being taught and told at that micro level the message is being i believe delivered in a better way than we can ever possibly do second is a, the second thing is a catchment area approach catchment area approach is basically we reach out to the our lowest level field functionaries how we did it is who are our field functionaries in that level our anganwadi uh, workers our auxiliary nurse midwives our blos who happen to be incidentally employed by the election commission of india so their service area is about 200 to 300 households at max so me as the sdo or he as the secretary i we have limited reach to people so we bring them in we have repeated workshops with them repeated workshops and we have mechanisms of slightly incentivizing their uh, their, their efforts and when they go back and service that 200 to 300 household which by the way is very simple for them to do and some of them and we have to understand who are these uh, uh, anganwadi 
workers or ANMs. They are also, meanwhile, sometimes they are part of the SAG groups who are again implementing the program. So they have a double impact. So they are benefactors, they get profited from it, and they are also our IEC motivators, they are our BCC motivators, and they help out help us out in that manner. So we found them to be very helpful in the whole process, and they were the easiest to convince, and surprisingly, women uh, were the easiest to convince in the whole program. Then uh, involvement of frontline workers, which is again the same. Expanding partnership for supply chain management and involving SHGs. Now, while we try to roll this program out, what we found is we have to have at least around 100 people in the district, co core people in the district who will be implementing it in the field. Who would they be? I mean, uh, there was a guideline that we cannot directly engage any contractors. It's impossible. So that's negated. Who will be sufficiently competent to, uh, to, 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 to put out a master role, to make the program, engage a mason? So we found we'll start with SHGs. And we found exceptional response from them. We made sure they remain profitable and continue to be in profit because we, we had mason trainings subsequently because as they tried to implement it, they, have, they were given some seed money. And they had their own endeavor, and they had the local jugar. But the mason, if he is not returning profit to them, they will be out of business. So we did some mason training for them. And these SHG workers, once they went back, they supervise because it is easiest for them to administer, that their administration cost is lowest, they reside at the local level, their procurement cost is lowest, they know which brick clean is uh, nearest, where to get sand from. So they know the, the, where to get it in the, at the lowest cost possible. So for them, it somehow remained very profitable. They got a profit of around 1,500 per toilet constructed. So that's why they remained in business and continued to make more. Uh, skill upgradation by meaning, uh, I mean to say the mason trainings that we did, convergence, close monitoring and review, which we of course did as, uh, as officials. And we made sure that everybody down the line goes to the field. So this whole thing was made possible through everybody going to the field. That, uh, that, that was a very important thing. And effective BCC for elimination of behavior change communication for elimination of open defecation. We literally wrapped the district with PCC materials. We put up thousands of placards, posters, and uh, we made interesting characters, cutouts. We named them Mina, and th that found very, pop uh, very much popularity with uh, school kids and others. So that's we started. That's how we started. And and uh, strange kinds of uh, sometimes sublime, sometimes ludicrous mechanisms employed. We. Uh, we had a mini marathon, and we named it. Uh, Dr. Salim named it "Run Out of Shame." So it found wonderful response from uh, uh, from the BSF, local police, the local athletes. Everyone wonderfully participated in that. We put out hot air balloons. Those we got from the CSR uh, donations from the banks and etc. So these are the uh, people-to-people -people contacts that we ensured that we made. So members, Zilla Parishad is taking out the jhadu and doing all this. And, and this is, by the way, at the very uh, Gram Sabha level. We ensure that we make a good stage for the Gram Sabha. We incentivize somebody going to Gram Sabha. That is very important. This is how we went to the schools. So this is me uh, on a Monday on a school, a very normal thing. And we uh, slight uh, five minutes speech on how open defecation has ill effects on your health and on your future generation. And uh, we talk to the children. And then they, we, we all take a common pledge, reading it aloud. Everybody has to shout and re literally read it aloud. This is uh, Salim sir talking to the faith organizations. So he's gotten all the leaders of the faith organizations together. And in the next slide, you can see this. Uh, we have got all our uh, a &Ms together. These are SAG group. And we got, by the way, 48 women SAG groups perfectly functioned well and got profit out of this program. And we could see a literally an economy uh, rising around this whole business of toilet making. These are our uh, BCC activities, all in Bengali, all in vernacular, innovative, and cartoons sometimes. And we put it up everywhere on the side of the highway where we could not put it up in flexes. We painted walls of schools. These are our faith leaders working for the common cause. On the right, we can see the MC sisters and the CNI sisters working together 
for open uh, for eradicating open defecation here the isconites uh, working uh, against open defecation and on the top we can see a common uh, uh, rally that they have taken out and uh, i can say you very few district administration people are all in all this we just informed them we brought them all together and then we somehow found them to be taking the lead this is uh, the mini marathon that uh, did take place. This is uh, Dr. Salim take, uh, giving the prize to the winner. This is, uh, again, the hot air ballooning that we did. Uh, we put it, that up in three subdivisions of the district. And this was uh, perhaps the final climax. We actually made it 122 kilometer long uh, human chain. We did manage to get two lakh people stand in the queue and hold it, each other's hand. and. So somehow from the beginning, we got people into it. A lot of people were uh, connected to the whole process of toilet making. And that's how we got wonderful feedback in the process. And that's how we believe we can take the success forward by keeping the district open defecation free. Once that 355,000 toilets have been made, that's a very good figure, very big figure. But more important is that uh, we need feedbacks who is still defecating in the open. We need feedbacks, which family is sleeping out? Which of the families is throwing uh, children's uh, excreta out in the open and not in the toilet? So that kind of minute figures do reach us through these mechanisms only. These are some innovative uh, initiatives uh, the district administration took. We found that some areas, uh, spatially encroached areas where encroached hutments come out, the hutments come out in such close proximity, we can't make a toilet for each, each of the families. So what we did is we put out cluster toilets. And we wrote the name of the families which we had to use them in the future to prevent future foods in the, between them. So we wrote the names who had to use the, those toilets in future. We made 222 school toilets. The district uh, was already in a very good condition before that. So only 222 was required. ICDS toilets was, again, a very major initiative. We made separate ICDH toilets, and that was not the regular rural pans that we find in a, in a, in a, in a toilet. We cut that into half and put uh, so that it's uh, child friendly. Uh, a child can literally squat in it. So, uh, an urban shochagars, these are, we put out enough number of, and we ensured that all the Sulav shochagars or that kind of uh, uh, cluster toilets, which were already, fun which were already there, remain functional. We made registers to check out how many people are using it. Is it making profit or not? Because if you, if you don't, don't make profit, nobody will be found to run it. And this will fall into disuse, which happens with most of these cases. So we found out that who is actually using it. And we've, at, we went to the micro level of getting it to the people who will run it. Because these are all government properties at some point in time, and we can obviously fix. Now, having done all that, we found there were certain fringe areas which were remaining untouched and open defecation continued to be rampant in those areas. Those areas were namely brick fields, which was again one of the biggest challenges for us. We had to exert our legal and sometimes social political pressure on them. What they said is since the workers in these uh, brick fields come from neighboring uh, states and uh, open defecation is prevalent there, so naturally by habitual methods they, they are open def def defecators. So what we did is we ensured that every brick field has one toilet per six worker. It was our belief that if we give them enough number of toilets and we reach out with our mechanisms, there will not be. So we ensured that we visited. We literally made a schedule of who is going to visit our BLLROs, our land officials. And we broke down, we tore apart six uh, brick fields in a span of one week. And that made some kind of a stir or something. And we compelled everybody to, you just make one. I am not arguing with you. You make one, and then you leave it. We'll ensure that uh, people go. So roadside eatery is, again, a very important thing. We wrote, yes. Uh, so uh, houses, hutments, again, by the railway tracks, it was very important for us. We constructed toilets for them. Mango orchards, again, we keep people f to stay there to guard the orchard. But those are the people who generally defecate in the open. We got them. You, are, you have enough money to make a toilet. Make a toilet within the orchard. Your people will only use it. We ensured that. This is a year-wise figure. We can see that uh, from 2012-13, through convergence method, from 2013-14, we made 
uh, this number of toilets and the accumulative figure as is also shown in the red line and the last phase uh, from to the later late period of 2014-15 to the end of 2014-15 it was uh, sponsored through SBMG uh, nat naturally the curve uh, took to a much higher pace because of that only it was easier to streamline the money rather than converging and our final achievement stands out to be 355000 toilets which is a very big number but more importantly our NDFA will be to keep that in use these are certain pictures and uh, it i leave to uh, Hirup to for the brief few sites i mean Uh, good evening. <coughs> uh, toilet construction is one was one of the prime emphasis of our district, but uh, our main target was not the construction of toilets, but to have a community ownership of those toilets. So we started a new uh, process so that every layer of the community or the society have their own ownership uh, concept of the declaration of the ODF uh, society. So we started with a bottom-up level uh, process. In, uh, so in initially, we started declaration of the, uh, by the catchment areas. That is the 6,620 6, centers. They first declared themselves as ODF. And in every catchment area, there was a celebration for better publicity of the uh, concept that this area is now totally open defecation free and nobody will defecate outside, including other concepts like proper hand washing in the schools, proper use of the toilets by all the children, et cetera. That was the other parameters of the open defecation free uh, concept. And followed by declaration in the Gram Panchayat and the ward level of the municipality, uh, gradually they declared after uh, all the catchments of one Gram Panchayat declared themselves ODF, then the Gram Panchayat declared followed by declare, declaration by the block or the municipality. And finally, our district declared itself as ODF. An honorable chief minister uh, was graced the occasion on 30th April. She declared that our, our district as the first ODF district. So here are some uh, snapshots of the ODF declaration at our ground level. This is the Onganwari level, where the Onganwari people, as well as at least one member from each family were asked to remain present during the celebration process so that everyone, the message goes to the every family. Then followed by the Gram Panchayat, and in, in each case, we had uh, documented one ODF certificate that was to sign by the concerned authority that we are now ODF and we will uh, abide by the following norms in our society. And this has, the, we have documented all the uh, certificates of our uh, district. This is one sample. And this is block level documentation. And followed by the final, this is the uh, declaration form by the Gram Panchayat. And in each declaration form, they were supposed to give one map showing the areas where earlier defecation used to happen. But now that has been restricted or prohibited after uh, the introduction of the Sabar Shuchagar project. And every family of the uh, concerned area had to sign and uh, acknowledge that the matter has been uh, communicated to all, and they will not defecate outside. Then we have some other uh, processes, such as we used to uh, do some uh, cognizances by the ration dealers. We, uh, from the ration dealers, MR shops, we also took certificate from the bona fide uh, uh, beneficiaries that they will not defecate outside, as well as we have kept uh, was registers in the schools where the uh, teacher used to ask the students that if you uh, have toilet in your house or not, if the uh, student replies that we don't have any toilet, then the teacher used to inform the local sanitary mart for construction of toilets. So involving all the stakeholders, a total momentum was gathered up so that we can reach the target that no uh, part of our district remains left with any uh, toilet or any type of open defecation. Now the validation. Uh, for being sure, for being uh, over sure, we conducted 
three uh, internal surveys and one external surveys by UNICEF. And you can so see the result. Pratichi Trust is a uh, NGO, reputed NGO. Inspiration also a reputed NGO conducted two uh, internal validation. And they found that the, uh, the more or less uh, same. But the latest survey by the Taru uh, conducted by UNICEF found that 99.8% access of toilets have been ensured at the fag end of our journey. So it was a great success to us. And finally, I have mentioned that our district celebration held, and this was the occasion. And we also got some awards and recognitions by uh, different uh, chief ministers. I was Scotch Award, Hartco Gold Award. And finally, we got the uh, best uh, uh, livelihood development award from UNPSA, or United Nations Public Service Award. The award ceremony is on the next month. So what was the outcome of this, our entire movement, the main uh, outcome was improvement of health indices. In our district, the uh, waterborne diseases has subsequently uh, got down, and the, a remarkable change has been noticed by the medical authorities. Women empowerment, so far we have engaged 48 SHGs, that means for 50, 500 women, and we have already secured a strong livelihood for them, alternative livelihood for them, and they are slowly becoming uh, uh, gradually entrepreneur from the uh, mere domestic workers, and the other the behavioral changes that have occurred, and people have uh, just, uh, people are believing that open defecation is a social crime. So this is the, we have already mentioned the lessons learned. <clears throat> Way forward, we have already constituted Paranajoddari committees at around 3,500 Paranajoddari committees that are local vigilance committees at the lowest rung of the society. These are the community, these are kind of community ownership. And these committees are being functional from the last March, and they will be functional. Uh, for another six months, so that they will take the authority of the com uh, community, so that nobody takes uh, duplicates outside, and they are being provided a small uh, gesture from our administration, and they are now acting as local guardian, so that no OD occurs. Water connection, but construction of these toilets will not be sustainable if there is no water connection. Recently, we, our state government has decided to provide water connection in each household and each toilet so that these constructions remain sustainable for the next years, coming years. And GP level in initiatives that has been taken by our uh, PRI institutions. And our next project is Nishana, that is the successor of Shabar Shochagar. This is the mainly targeted to the health related matters the health and hygiene, sanitation, malnutrition. We have already started, uh, several, we have taken several initiatives, just such as we have developed our own brand of sanitary napkin and hand sanitizer, and also taken up an ambulance network for the critical persons, and also other uh, initiatives. So, Sabar Shochagar is now a community movement, and this community movement is being converted uh, to a health-oriented movement. So these are the glimpses of the snapshots taken by the media in our due course. So these are the, our presentation. Thank you for uh, you know, an extraordinary story of uh, really sort of initiative and commitment uh, at the level of one district. It's really uh, a truly inspiring and, 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 and compelling presentation. Uh, we'll move right into the next presentation, which is sort of somewhat more, um, uh, perhaps higher level of uh, abstraction, uh, centering on this question, how do we measure uh, ODF? And I'll invite Shivagato to launch. Uh, thank you, Pratap. Uh, after this inspiring story of, uh, uh, of uh, an, an active administration and a aware community, uh, this presentation, um, I, uh, which I guess you'll get to see in a bit, <laughs> uh, um, is um, it, it looks is looking back to look forward in a sense because this debate uh, has matured uh, um, around uh, how open defecation free might be measured. Uh, so 
uh, we, I'll just run you through uh, a few background slides. Uh, uh, and of, I mean, this needs uh, no mention because uh, we all know that 59% uh, of the OD pro, uh, uh, population of the globe is, uh, comes from India. Uh, another um, uh, just pointer is that in, uh, international policy uh, debates as well as how national programs have evolved uh, have a very close linkage. Uh, and uh, it was in the International uh, Water and Sanitation Decade that our first rural sanitation program started. Uh, and in the International uh, Year for Sanitation is when, uh, when the National Urban Sanitation Policy uh, uh, was announced. Uh, the genealogy of the word open defecation free is, uh, is also a very interesting uh, story, but I won't get into it very much. But it's much newer in the sanitation debate. Uh, st uh, starting around the period 2000 to 2003, uh, but very much grown out of Bangladesh and India's efforts uh, through the Nirmal Gram Puraskar going global and now being incorporated within the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, uh, some, uh, some brief um, um, comments on why open defecation free seems to have uh, got such, uh, such uh, um, uh, traction and purchase. Uh, for uh, I mean, one that it kind of e emphasizes the public good aspect of sanitation. It recognizes uh, that partial coverage and use of toilets is is unsatisfactory in terms of uh, public health outcomes, a and that um, it's a clearly identifiable stage within the sanitation improvement chain. Um, uh, 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 in the past, uh, from the period 2000 to 2015, uh, the MDGs were the global framework under which sanitation improvements were being measured. Uh, that was, uh, was uh, the focus in that stage was uh, only on basic sanitation, improvements in uh, basic sanitation. Uh, going forward in the uh, sustainable development goals, uh, ending open defecation is now a, a, a stated uh, um, objective. The JMP, the global framework, uh, borrows from national frameworks na na uh, na across nations. And uh, in India, uh, the, uh, sense, the census surveys have increasingly uh, f uh, evolved in uh, mapping open defecation. And uh, the NSSO also feeds into the JMP framework. But this is true from other countries, too. Uh, yeah, national censuses from other countries, too, are, are then um, recorded in the JMP. Uh, in terms of increasing engagement with ODF measures in Indian programs, uh, the story is also uh, one of evolution. Uh, from, uh, first stated in the Nirmal Gram Puraskar uh, in 2005, uh, we see an increasing um, um, absorption in the mainstream programs, and Swachh Bharat Abhyan, in that sense, uh, ha has a lot uh, on on uh, aspects of open defecation, free communities. Uh, there are uh, a whole b a bunch of uh, indicators that are used um, uh, both in the Indian programs and uh, internationally uh, uh, as input indicators that kind of uh, um, put across the, uh, uh, the open defecation status. Uh, some of them are, li are listed here. Mm, and this is an ongoing debate with, uh, with uh, both the, uh, means the, the government of India ministry is looking at this quite carefully. Um, however, what these measurements in the past have, have resulted in uh, is, this, uh, is a, a couple of slides on that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the Nirmal Gram Puraskar uh, ran uh, from uh, 2005, awarded a number of GPs uh, for achieving o o ODF status. A couple of ZPs also were awarded uh, uh, in the states that are marked green. Uh, and then um, uh, the total sanitation campaign uh, and the census results threw up uh, 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 an important debate. And this was that uh, ex uh, what one was expecting because of the, uh, the, the way the, uh, the uh, total sanitation campaign was moving and the Nirmal Paraskar was, was, uh, was kind of uh, boosting uh, the rural sanitation sector. One had expected uh, to see much stronger results coming off the ground. 
uh, but when the census 2011 came, the, the figures of, uh, 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 of people not having access to safe toilets uh, and not defecating in the open uh, were much, much uh, below what was expected. Um, the uh, number of surveys have been conducted to better understand uh, some of these uh, the issues and the reasons behind this. Uh, the slip back uh, st status, there was NGP, uh, NGP uh, impact uh, assessment study, which found that num uh, lots of these villages had slipped back. Uh, there were um, uh, a whole bunch of issues that came up right from uh, you know, unfinished toilets to uh, people not wanting to use them and, and, and uh, limited access to water among them. And then um, uh, means uh, also th there's been more studies on the behavioral aspects of, uh, of uh, uh, the absorption of toilets. And uh, one to mention here is the squat, squat survey. Uh, and uh, throwing up some very, very interesting um, uh, um, issues uh, that need further investigation. For example, uh, this survey in five st in North Indian states uh, has kind of documented that 40% of the households uh, with a working latrine uh, still have at least one member who defecates in the open. Um, there, uh, there, are, uh, there, are, um, there are a bunch of strategies that people have been using uh, to make toilet cleaning uh, a lesser cumbersome exercise, which may not be very safe in themselves. Um, uh, and a whole, a whole bunch of issues uh, regarding that uh, uh, the uh, people in uh, in rural uh, India in these states uh, in these communities that were investigated don't seem to uh, want low cost toilets and want it uh, uh, unlike in other parts in the world where, uh, where where toilet penetration has has improved rapidly. So uh, means there's uh, this this is a kind of breadth of of various surveys that are happening in the sector. Uh, right from very high intensity RCTs where, uh, where, ev uh, where the use of toilets are being monitored through remote sensing uh, um, uh, um, devices where hand washing is being studied uh, on one side. Uh, the, the, of course, the census household survey uh, being another very intensive exercise. And a whole bunch of sample surveys, the NSSO 69th round, uh, the uh, number of non-governmental and research surveys, program evaluations on, uh, as sample surveys, and aggregator surveys where, uh, where uh, essentially are non-household surveys but conducted through key informants or settlement level um, um, investigation. Um, uh, basically around uh, program, uh, program delivery. Uh, so, uh, uh, what what we've kind of learned from uh, on ODF communities and its measurement, um, uh, just a couple of points uh, to uh, to um, start off uh, on the discussion, is that uh, India is among a very few set of nations uh, which actually have a significant toilet subsidy program. Uh, um, South Africa being another one, but very few have such a, a significant scale of a toilet subsidy program. Uh, it, it's the only co uh, country which has an incentive and reward scheme uh, to reward open defecation status and uh, people uh, moving out of uh, OD. Well, others do some recognition award kind of programs, uh, but uh, uh, not uh, a reward and incentive. A slip back from the past experience seems to be highly prob probable. So social mobilization, innovations, and special efforts are needed for maintaining the and improving the status. Um, One-time measurement and ODF-free uh, status uh, uh, needs to be re-looked at because uh, means in one sense, uh, because of the behavioral aspects of it, uh, maybe uh, after repeated uh, ODF uh, surveys showing that maintenance of that state, status is possible, maybe the reward uh, should be uh, linked uh, with that. Uh, and sanitation advances uh, means therefore cannot be achieved as a one go one time effort. And uh, uh, finally, also that the uh, program surveys and aggregator biases are very difficult to control. 
Uh, so an independent ongoing measurement system is needed uh, to monitor and record sanitation st uh, status progress along a matrix where open defecation free could be, uh, could be one, uh, one goal, but there could also be solid and liquid waste management, hygiene, and safe water, which are the components uh, that uh, uh, these programs look at. So some ideas going forward. Uh, there, there seems to be a strong need for a non-program la la linked annual survey on a sanitation improvement matrix. Um, uh, possibly one of the better solutions seems to be an NSSO and possibly NITI-IO kind of managed survey uh, with, with the objective to gauge sanita the sanitation situation itself from the pers perspective uh, of, uh, of, uh, of waste disposal, human excreta, liquid and solid, uh, and so that the effects on health are reduced, um, and negative effects on health are reduced. And possibly also uh, th this could uh, be designed in such a manner that we better understand the efficacy of sanitation efforts uh, done by states in a comparative fashion.